striking silver and gold. With Captain Stanley of the Bonetta expressing disinterest in continuing to search for the Hispaniola treasure, while Captain Phipps probably expressed enthusiasm and new confidence, the next logical choice for commander was obvious. Narborough turned to the hard-partying Duke of Albemarle, who assembled a group of private investors to fund another expedition. Phipps was tasked with finding suitable ships and these came to be the James and Mary, a 22-gun 200-ton frigate and the 45-ton Henry of London, a sloop commanded by Francis Rogers, 39, Phipps' second mate on the previous voyage, he had left the Rose in Boston ISTG Vol. 4, Sally Rose. Phipps utilized experience as a sailor and shipwright to select high-quality anchors, chains, and cables to hold their ships securely in close proximity to the shoals for months as they tried to fish treasure from it. 500 pound worth of merchandise was taken along to barter for provisions, as well as to provide cover, or a ruse, that they were in Hispaniola. Merely as merchants, not treasure hunters. The London investors must have felt confident because they paid a total of £3,210 outfitting the ships for the voyage, 40. Unlike the voyage of the Rose, the crew were to be paid regular wages. Engraving depicting Phipps raising the sunken treasure. Phipps sailed from the Downs on September 12, 1686, and on November 28 arrived in Hispaniola, Samama Bay, where they spent two weeks restocking their water and provender. The weather was bad, and the search consequently did not get underway for a few more weeks. January 12, Phipps sent out Captain Rogers in the smaller Henry of London along with three Native American divers, Jonas Abimelech and John Pasqua, name of other diver not listed, to search what was then called the Ambrosia Bank, now the Silver Bank. There was a bit more delay from weather, but Peter Earl writes, there is no doubt that he knew exactly where he was going. January 20, they spotted cannons from a shipwreck lying on the white sands of the reef. The ship they had found was the Almiranta of the Spanish Silver Fleet, later determined to be Nuestra Señora de la Concepción, the English did not know the name of the ship wrecked in 1641, 41, over the next two days, the divers were able to bring up 3,000 coins and three silver bars. They decided to travel back to Phipps to let him know, but this turned out to be a somewhat slow and treacherous trip among the reefs. After Phipps was discreetly informed of their amazing find, he spent the next nine days preparing the ships and gathering enough food to sustain the men over months of bringing up treasure. 42. During the controversies that surrounded Phipps at the end of his life, his critics like to portray him as hot-headed, ill-bred, and impatient, so it seems worth noting his careful conduct during this life-changing and momentous time. Through March and April, the divers and ship's crews worked to recover all manner of treasure, silver coins, silver bullion, doubloons, jewelry, a small amount of gold, and other artifacts. Concerned about the possibility of mutiny, Phipps guaranteed to the crew, who had been hired for seamen's wages, that they would receive shares in the find even if he had to pay them from his own percentage, 43, he carefully avoided putting in at any ports before anchoring at Gravesend, where he dispatched a courier to London with the news. The treasure weighed in at over 34 tons, or 205,536 pounds. Almost a quarter went to Albemarle, 44 of Phipps, after paying out £8,000 in crew shares, received pound 11 000, 45, Phipps was treated as a hero in London, and the find was the talk of the town, 46. Some economic historians argue that Phipps' find significantly affected history, because it led to a major increase in the formation of joint stock companies and even played a role in the eventual formation of the Bank of England, 45. Phipps and the crew were rewarded by the investors with medals, and Phipps was knighted by James in June. James also rewarded Phipps with the post of Provost Marshal General, Chief Sheriff, of the Dominion of New England, serving under Sir Edmund Andrus, 47, in September 1687 Phipps returned to the wreck, though he did not command the venture. Admiral Narborough elected to personally lead the expedition, but it was not nearly as successful. The wreck had been discovered by others, and the arrival of the English scattered more than 20 smaller ships. Treasure worth £10,000 was recovered before Narborough's death in May 1688 brought the expedition to an end. Phipps had by then already left the wreck site in early May, sailing for Boston for what seems to have been his first time home in four and a half years, to take up his new post as Provost Marshal General, 48. 